Alrighty then, let's uh switch over to a different location. Gosh, I got missed on a sixty-nine. Ah, oh, feels good. That's what matters most. Alrighty, so Alexander and Big B, you uh, find yourselves traveling along with a group of other Imperial Guardsmen. With the sounds of, well, the entire night air seems filled with the sounds of Arbutus, uh sirens and searching hover cars. Fortunately, for the most part, uh, what few you see happen to fly past you relatively quickly. But you are beginning to see on some of the uh, main screens as you go by the vidcasters, uh, images of sort of like news personnel uh, videotaping what appears to be the outside of that fighting arena surrounded by Arbutus. And you can also see a very similar symbol, the symbol of the Inquisition on one of the vehicles that has just arrived. But fortunately, both of you are, for the most part, safe. <laughs> so, what would you two like to do? Imagine you're uh, just navigating back to where you need to be. That sounds like about the right thing to do. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Alexander, you go. You managed to make it back to the barracks without too much of a difficulty. Big B, you crash on the bed. Alexander, you get to your broom closet. You turn and you stand outside of the entrance. Because, you know, technically until the sergeant comes here to dismiss you guys to bed is where you're supposed to be. Oh, yeah, he definitely, definitely got arrested. <laughs> Alexander, you, you, can, you, go, you run through all the events through your cybernetic brain. You process all the memories of you fighting people with bats. He, all the information you had received about this uh, underground club of uh, tech priests and engine seers. And you're just like, ah, five memories. Delete. There will be no no record, no evidence of the shenanigans that had occurred tonight. But the rest of you, uh, Scipio, I'm going to need you as you attempt to evade the arbiters of this city. Yup. <laughs> How would you like to do this? Well, there's two places I probably can try to get to uh, that I know of, that I've been to before, that I have a direct path to. One, of course, is the barracks, and the other one would be actually the Heavy Metal Club. Alright, which one would you like to go to? Um, If I go to the barracks and succeed at that, then I'm basically home free. So let's see how that goes, and if it goes well, then all's good. Okie doke. All right. In that case, roll me. I believe you did take one of the nap maps. So roll me the navigate surface. Oh boy. Uh, any bonus or penalty? Since you've been to both of these places already, I'll give you. Well, I think the map was supposed to give you a twenty point bonus to begin with, correct? Uh, I don't ever remember that, unfortunately. All right. 30 it is. All right. 
So we'll go with 30 bonus and probably still fail. Oh, cool. I can actually find the barracks. All right. Decent time. Nice. Yeah. Uh, George got incredibly lost. <laughs> yeah, George was the one who got super lost. We actually managed to get back to the barracks in order to say that we don't know where George is. <laughs> we just couldn't find a good location to hang out at. Yeah. All right, you know how to get back. However, the city is alive with people trying to find you. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> pick a number one through ten. I like six. Let's do six. six. All right, I'm going to do three rolls, and if for every six that I roll uh, is going to be an encounter you have with the Arbutus. Mm -hmm. So none. You manage to sneak on by as they begin to gradually close down each section. You get to the barracks. You begin to put yourself away. And uh, you see, of course, the tech priest just standing there at attention outside the door. Oh, Alexander. Hey, confirm to me. What are your memories of the last couple hours? <laughs> he just looks... He, doesn't, he sort of glances over at you briefly and then goes right back to staring ahead and just... Repeats, don't talk Yo, to me. Sorry. Rolls his eyes at Alexander. Ah, fine. The sergeant wanted to know, but I guess I'll just tell him you're not complying. <laughs> it's just, it's just a loop at this point. Just don't talk to me, Saker. Wait, Don't, it's like, are you even awake? No, you're just playing pre-recorded messages at me. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll just go flop in my room. And as you walk, as you walk past, you hear off at the end of the hallway. Don't talk to me, sucker. <laughs> Still playing. <it. laughs> oh, perfect. Well, at least I'm at least I'm back. Hey, you managed to make it back. Meanwhile, Jort, you find yourself in the back of a. You find yourself in the back of a uh, hover car with your sergeant, who is still pretty pretty badly injured. <laughs> I'm pretty badly injured too. I'm at like crit six. And uh, as you guys are being transported, uh, you can hear some of the Ar Arbites or uh, Arbites sort of glancing back at you, because where you are in the back seat, you have the two drivers up front, and then there's another Arbites in that back area with you, with a bolter pointed at both of you. And as you see them, there he goes. So I'm not entirely sure what it was you boys were up to, but, uh, is there anything you'd like to get off your chest before we get to the headquarters? Bear in mind, look at the this conversation is being recorded. And Sarge looks and goes, uh, Well, now that you mention it, I could use medical attention. Additionally, both uh, Private Jort and myself are members of the Imperial Guard. We were kidnapped, but I can only be some sort of weird underground fight club cult and have been attempting to fight our way free when, thankfully, you boys showed up to rescue us. So, thank God for all that. By the grace of the Emperor. Uh... They tricked me. They said they had boobies. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out the only booby there was him. <laughs> There's zero response from the Arbutus. Right. I, I think he's just here to record us mumbling random bullshit, Jort. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, in that case, please contact. And he sort of like leans forward and then thinks better of it as he realizes the bolt rifle is following him as he gets closer. And he goes, right, so if you would be so kind as to contact Commissar Hartley, uh, he should be staying at this location. I'll write it down for you. And, uh, oh, Lieutenant Harper would be nice. Uh, they're really the ones that are supposed to, you know, take care of all this upper echelon conversations, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is probably not going to pan out well. So, instead, uh, while they are while they are flying, after a few minutes, the hover car settles down. The door is open. You guys are escorted towards different cells. And uh, after several minutes, George the door opens up, and you recognize the symbol of the Inquisition as a uh, young, younger man walks in and goes, Well, um, I've been informed that you are Private Jort. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's what they call me. Well, that is fantastic. I'm glad that we can get off to such honest interactions. Um... Would you be so kind as to explain to me what exactly it was that brought you here into my well, headquarters? It was the hover car. We got arrested. I believe you'll find your levity is misplaced here, Private Jolt. There's no time for joking. And while your wit does your... If, while your wit is evidence of your clever mind... Honesty will be better suited. Well, the the gangers were trying to rob us, and they kidnapped me, put me in the pokey, and Sarge rescued me. Hmm. Is there any indication as to why they thought kidnapping a private would be beneficial for them? Uh... Yeah, they said they were going to ransom me for some money. That's a terrible plan. That's what I told them. I ain't worth much. Well, apparently, that is not entirely true. I've been able to pull up your records thanks to uh, our communication with a Lieutenant Carlton DeWare. And it seems as though... You are soon to be highly decorated. Yeah, I guess I'm a war hero. And modest one at that. More importantly, it seems as though you have contributed on a number of occasions to my particular uh, you know, organization's efforts. Now, when I tried to run your number, a large portion of your background was redacted under, well, under the codex of an Inquisitor Lamotte. Yeah, I did some missions for him, too. It's not often that someone gets to do missions plural for an Inquisitor. Well, I think it was just one, but... Fair enough. I won't ask you to tell me what that was about. However, because of that interaction and because of a certain event that occurred during your rescue, Private Jolt, your case is being remanded to Inquisitor Lamont. Uh, we have done a number of, well, tests just by entering you into this room, and it doesn't seem as though you are currently under the observation, influence, or, well, 
effect of any extraplanar entity or, well, agent of the chaos, I guess we should say. I'm not entirely sure how well you have been read up on the old enemy, but needless to say, for the moment, it doesn't seem as if you are under their sway or acting with their interests in mind, which is odd considering there was a rather sizable incident of warp phenomena that occurred just outside that fighting pit. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Now, your sergeant, on the other hand, has not proven free of corruption. Now, can you tell me, has your sergeant a... And uh, he goes, let's see. Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Jones. Do you know if he has been exposed to any warp phenomena in the past? Uh, yeah, we had a sanctioned sacker in our squad not too long ago. Ah. And was that sanctioned sacker present here this evening? Uh, yeah, I think so. I was locked up. I didn't see much, only the Sarge. Interesting. According to Unit 2, while they were well, while they were busy restraining you, one of the units claimed to see another figure running at full speed around the opposite corner. Now this adds up with the report of the perimeter unit that encountered an individual after hearing a loud noise. We inspected the area. It seems as though they jumped from the well, second story wall down into one of the many bazaar booths, uh, knocked a number of cans and other things all across the street, made quite a mess. Do you know who that individual was? Uh, like I said, sir, I didn't see much. I was in the jail. I heard fighting. It could have been a ganger running out of the back. Sarge had to get the keys and get me out of the, the cell. Hmm. Uh, for the record, do you, does your character actually not know? Uh, he wouldn't. He, he was tased no like after I was already gone. <laughs> no, fair enough. Well, Private Jort, you are going to be remanded back to Lieutenant Carl, or, uh, back to Dewey, and you'll be transported to your barracks. Uh, apparently, there is a rather substantial award ceremony for which you are obligated to attend. So, in light of that, and in light of the absence of any corruption on your part, we are going to merely record your statement for the record and release you under the supervision of your chain of command. There is a commissar uh, waiting outside to collect you. A commissar Hartley. So, you'll be returned to him while we determine what is the best course of action for Staff Sergeant Jones. Is there anything else you'd like to add before you release? No, not really. Very well. We have one follow-up question. In your possession, well, not in your possession, but when you were arrested, uh, our, in, our evidence collection team managed to collect this, and he takes out this... Uh, revolver, that slug thrower that you had from before. Mm -hmm. And he sets it down. And, uh, you know, you can see from the etchings on it that he sets it down, like, do you, or can you, tell me where it was that you found this? Well, 
that was the prize that I took when I was on the job for the Inquisitor. A prize. And what? More like a souvenir. I found it. Finders keepers, as they say. You found it in a box, in a chest, with someone wielding it. Please, everything you can tell it me was about in a this. How? A pile. Yeah. Hmm. And what was the rest of the pile comprised of? Uh, there was a few piles. Some of them had guard equipment. Some of them had random odd names. Honestly, I don't. I don't remember. What's the yeah. <laughs> sure thing. Well, for your own edification, we will be confiscating this. It belonged to one of our most storied members, uh, Inquisitor O'Neill. He went missing while investigating rumors of, well, a Nurgalite cult. I'm not sure if anything that means anything to you. However, if you could let us know about whether or not there were any remains that could be recovered, we would be much obliged. As, regrettably, well, he went missing some 200 years ago. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, now I'm just thinking that that fucking guy in the closet was the, the commissar guy. Uh, I I I don't know how much I'm allowed to tell you because it was all on that that visitor mission. But yeah, there's some some old bodies around. Well, thank you very much for this information, and well, Private Jort, thank you for returning this artifact to us, even if it was not your intent. This will go a long way to maintaining our morale and unraveling the mystery that is the disappearance of Inquisitor O'Neill. So, I won't take up any more of your time. Big hero of the Imperium that you are, I'll allow you to go on your way. And he stands up. He yeah, I'll give him there. like a little salute. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes. You don't actually have to do that in with you sort of trails off. But uh, he he opens the door and allows you to step outside. And as soon as you step outside, uh, you do see Commissar Hartley standing there. And at the same time, uh, you do not see your sergeant anywhere. However, Commissar Hartley goes because uh. Staff Sergeant Jones uh, was... Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Private Jort, it is a pleasure to see you again. Staff Sergeant Jones will not be accompanying us on account of his horrific injuries suffered in your rescue. But I have taken it upon myself to see personally that you are returned to the barracks where the rest of you and your unit will stay for the next, well, week or so until... The award ceremony commences. Do you have any questions before we leave? And before you answer, no, guys, sure. that's a rhetorical question. Get in the car. <laughs> you know me, sir. No questions asked. Yeah, except for literally all of them. <sighs> Let us go, Prophet George. And uh, you see as they're leaving that a lot of the Arbites are really mean mugging both you and the commissar. And as you leave, you see one of the uh, Arbites, one with like a sergeant stripes on, he's sort of, sort of rubbing his jaw, and you notice there's a massive bruise on it. And he goes, as the commissar is leaving, he goes, I wouldn't concern yourself too much, eh, sergeant? 
This is a military matter. These things happen all the time. But don't worry. I won't be seeing you on the front lines anytime soon. Thank you for your assistance in this matter. Have a good day. And with that, he leaves. Roll me awareness real quick. All right. Uh, uh negative five minutes. Yep, you don't see anything as you guys get in the car and you're escorting as you're flying by. You see the uh, Inquisitor sort of nursing his knuckles. And he goes, yeah, so surprisingly, many of these people didn't want to turn you over to us. They were under the impression that the laws of this one city outrule the entirety of the Imperial Guard's, uh, well, judicial side. We had to come to an understanding. See, I impressed upon them that the return of my soldiers was vital to the war effort, and that if I did not get my privates back, well, I would have to start drafting immediately from the people in my immediate sight. And yes, that includes Arbitus. So, apparently you have some friends in high places, a eh, Private Short? It's not very often that I can use yeah, the sure. name of an Inquisitor and do so, well, convincingly. No man a few words, Private Jot, I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, as the hover car lands, you're let back into your uh, area, and Commissar Hartley basically just goes... <clears throat> If you would be so kind as to wake everyone and have them stand outside the door at attention, I have something that I need to address them. Yes, sir. And then I just go off and do that. He uh, walks up to the tech priest standing outside the door and goes, Hmm. Engine seer, are you awake in there or are you resting? I can never tell with your time. Uh, Has to turn off the fuck off, Psyker, bud. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Fuck off, Psyker. <laughs> uh, he goes, Ah, good. If only we could get all of our soldiers so attentive. It would save a great deal of trouble on our part. where Alexander immediately recommends all people become servitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Regrettably, we have already looked into that on a number of times. It is far cheaper to just yell at teenagers until they do what you want. Servitors require programming, thus most of the recruits that we have already have a predisposition towards violence in the first place. And better than everything else, no one cares when they go missing. Whereas every time I ding a servitor, I have to file through 300 triplicate forms to explain it. Well, at any rate, I'll take your suggestion under consideration. <laughs> All right. So as the rest of you are pulled out into attention, uh, Scipio, you were pretty pretty knocked around, were you not? Yup. Uh, I have yeah. taken some small amount of damage. Okie doke. Not increased. And Bigby, Bigby, you have taken critical damage, correct? Yes. Okie doke. As you are all standing out there, horrifically wounded, uh, you see the commissar lightly horrifically wounded. You see, as uh, the commissar begins pacing up and down the lines, and he goes, I would like to start off with an apology to all of you. It was under my assumption that far from the front lines and the green skin menace that we have been fighting for at this point, 
you would be able to handle the temptations and risks of a civilized environment. Clearly, I misread your capacity for common sense. Now, I am sure that none of you were involved in the shenanigans that Private Jort was involved in. I am sure that the blaster wounds suffered by our rattling here were for some radiator issue. Possibly an outlet with uh, too much charge in your broom. Is that quite right, Pikachu? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a terrible excuse. You need to think of a better one. So, <laughs> we do not have access to a medic, which means that you are going to have to find a way to take care of yourselves. I have managed to procure a medic kit. I've left it at the front desk for you. But from this point on, you are all under house arrest. You will not be leaving this facility. Now, we may not have access to our sergeant for much longer. He has been grievously injured in the rescue of Private Jort. But we were told, or at least we should say that, we promised that there would be the individuals receiving high commendations, and that these individuals would be allowed to be interviewed by the press, and that the ruling class would be able to hang about you and stare at all of your wonderful new shiny medals and feel great about their do donations to the war effort. In light of this, I cannot afford to have any of you severely injured. But any injuries that you do have were likely suffered while fighting the greenskins on the front lines. So, Keep yourselves fed, keep yourselves fit, and keep yourselves out of trouble. Now, Scipio, I will need you to accompany me briefly. So, stand two. Uh, yes, sir. The rest of you, go about your business. And uh, right. yeah, as he walks with... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, as we're walking away, I'll just go ahead and briefly mention, you did say we don't have an official Medicaid, but I do still have the skills for it. I should be able to patch everyone else up. <clears throat> Such a faulty hotel, really. <clears throat> do what you can for them. Treat everyone that you can, so they are ship shape at the end of the week. In the meantime, you are in quite a great deal of trouble. My psychic friend. Mm. I suppose when isn't that the case? You have existed the entirety of your life with a proverbial doom of Damocles hanging over your head. At any time, could be possessed by the agents of chaos and damn the entire regiment. You could damn the entire planet that we are on. And for the moment, you are tolerated because of your skill set, because of your capabilities, and because there is a Staff Sergeant Jones within arm's reach, ready to put you down if things go awry. Uh, but I do hear he's what I do not see. Injured. That is correct. Which means, until he returns, be your right hand. And I will guard you against the perfidious nature of the vault by the only means which I have been accommodated with. And he pats the bolt pistol on the sip. This is the only warning you are going to get from me. Unlike Staff Sergeant Jones, I do not value your life more than I value my life. Know your life over my career. And reputation. So, tread lightly and in the event that the Inquisition ends up on this doorstep to question you, well, I would advise you to say that, well, 
speak the truth. That you went on this raid to rescue Private Jolt, that you fled when the rest of the unit fled, and that you know nothing of any, well, warp phenomenon that occurred in the area. I see. I understand, Commissar. Feeling quite right? Do you think you can carry on with your obligations, the Astrum of the town? Absolutely. I've never been clearer in because my focus. If you have any doubts, if you no longer want to bury this, bear this burden, I understand, and I cannot hate you for it. I will do what I must to lift this burden from your shoulders. Ah, a generous offer, but truly it's my burden to keep. For now, Scipio, for now. Don't let it become mine. Of course. I ask nothing of you, Commissar. Fantastic. In that case, rest <clears throat> the medicates to your friends. And uh, let's see if there is anything we can't do to bring about the swift return of your sergeant. Huh? Of course. Oh, time to set up some triage. Deets. He doesn't go anywhere. He just stands there and looks at you. Yep. I'm just going to go over to the front desk and uh, take, the, uh, take the kit and get to work. Although I guess everyone's going to sleep first, honestly, but I'll get to work <laughs> over the next several days. All right. Give me all of those rolls. Let's see if you can get Big B back in the fighting right. shape. Big Keep in B mind, you just have two critical wounds, so there's a penalty sure. there. So, Big B, how many crits do you have? Two. Two. I believe that means this is at minus 20 from the plus 10. It would be on Medicaid, so we're at minus 10. How much does the kit give? Uh, I believe the kit is only a 20, correct? 20? And yeah, I give me a plus, nothing. plus 10, then. Use it. Roll. Bit of the land. Uh, not super good. Uh, no. Doesn't really really you... much damage. However, you do just recover. <laughs> recover normal. Uh, do you have any fate left, or do, do you have to burn your fate? Uh, I had to burn it. I got nothing. So this is just long-term care here. All right. So let him know how much health you he uh, gets of extended uh, care. Good question. Whatever natural rate is for today, uh, I will also go ahead and do some on myself just so that I can go ahead and do it. This will be a lot easier because I'm not critted. Uh, so I recover one plus one. So I recover two points. And then we'll go ahead and say the soldiers in general in case they took anything. Uh, I am assuming none of them got crit, actually. So let's go ahead and... Actually, none of them even got shot. Oh, wow, they're actually all perfectly fine, aren't they? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. if I don't need to roll well, yeah, George, I'll just roll George for is also for horrifically... Days. Oh, George, how, how terribly awesome. crit are you? Yeah, I'm pretty messed up. What are you um, at? Like Aren't you at crit 6? You're at minus yeah. 30. Uh, I need to hit a 7 to deal with you. There's not enough medical equipment here to help you. <laughs> That's fine. I'll just uh, die. Whereas... Big B, at least, I can do it on a 47. <laughs> How much do I heal naturally? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. It's in the combat section, which I'd have to pull up here. Making attacks, injuries, wounds, damage, critical damage, or moving damage. Here we go. Uh, characters automatically recover damage over time through natural healing. Medical attention may increase it. Depends on several factors, fully explained on page 268. 268. Healing. 
uh, critically damaged. Character is critically damaged when he's taking damage in excess of his wounds. Uh, does not remove damage unless he devotes himself to complete rest, i.e. when I'm doing extended care. If he does so, characters make a challenging toughness chest plus zero each 24 hours. If you succeed, remove one point to crit. All right, Jort, get to it. You have five days, buddy. Uh, I am lightly damaged. Removes one damage per day via natural healing. So I have actually healed. Uh, I'm sorry, I just rolled toughness, right? Yeah, toughness, straight. Oh, so that was one of the crits. Can't heal, hide. <laughs> yep, so you'd remove one crit. Jort does not remove any crit on day one. Oh, again, oh, right. day two, baby. Yeah, day two. So you're now uh, down to five crit. <laughs> uh, Big B. Hey, how much uh, crit do you have? One. Yes. All right. Congratulations, you heal five. Five crit or five total wounds. Five five points in general. I assume crit first. If I recall right to how it happened. So, congratulations. You now no longer have... Uh, you can heal crit, just... It is just taking a 24-hour period. A so, roll it again, friend. Yeah. I'm in via what we're doing. Oh, via the toughness test? That's on page 268. Oh, you heal normal damage first. Oh, okay. You heal normally, and then you heal crit. So it's the reverse, everybody. <laughs> you have to finish healing. So, uh, George, you're still technically at minus six, but you have more health to go first. Crit heal by time, bed breath. This, this is uh, bed care. He's, he's shaved off two. Yeah. yeah. Two okay. of his crits so far, so now he's at four. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do the George roll first. Three more days left. Uh, George, I don't, I don't help know. you at all. Uh, Big B, you're only at one crit at the moment, correct? Well, apparently I only healed my natural body first, and then the crits come last, right? Uh... I'm just reading in the critically damaged section. And the point removes one point of critical damage. When you roll toughness, you remove crit. Okay, so... So I'll... you did remove that crit. I'm down to zero crit, and I'm trying to figure out how many current wounds I have left. Uh, I think you were at minus two, so this is a minus one. So net bonus is 20. No, you were... He had... Net bonus is twenty. What? Oh, you mean for the roll? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, I already rolled you, and then that was George. So this is technically the day after, right? Right. Okay, so this is day three now. This is the third roll I'm making for people. Yeah. Is that correct for everyone? Um, I have no idea. I'm confused now. <laughs> How many toughness checks have you, you made? Keep rolling this? toughness, George. I've rolled three Eight toughness two checks so far. Out of yeah, when I uh, heal, you, you heal normal four. wounds. When you heal with toughness, four, you heal. Yeah. 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 Roll. So you uh, did recover to my minus last. five. So what was your healing result on me for the healing of normal wounds? Five points. Five points, okay. All right. Uh, so Big B, uh, here is one last for you. Uh, you receive only three for resting for three days. Uh, and then, Jort. We think toughness would be what Jort. Any bonuses out, right? to the toughness test if they're being. Uh, Are there any bonuses to the toughness test if you're being treated by somebody? Uh, it doesn't specifically say in the critical damage section. Uh, medical attention. Uh, basically takes place on page 125, which is the other reference I was doing. Uh, and that's the Medicaid test that it's I'm making right now. Put it all in one spot. Yeah. I know, it's, it's just all over the place. Uh... Thank you, Doug. Well, the good news is you're only at crit four now, George, so yay. 
for it. All right. So congratulations. So George is only at a minus 10 on this roll then. Uh, and only receives a couple of points for taking three days of healing. That's it. So not the best showcase of medical skill ever. I have taken several injuries straight to the brain. <laughs> Uh, so, do I get any regular oh, wounds back? That that was three days. Uh, yeah, that was three regular wounds just now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. so I am at so that was uh, five, I guess. Oh, George rolled five to he re-rolled a lot of those. Five, he succeeded on two. Yeah, he's now down to crit four. So you know it's closer to not being dead. Iron Jaw, I think. Uh, all right. So you said that there were three oh, days of healing, or there actually five? What's just to be clear? Jaw Iron Jaw is good. Stunning. stunning. So he rolled five toughness checks for the five days that he had left, and he passed two of them. So instead of crit six, he's at crit four, and then he has managed to gain whatever health from the resting for five days would give him. Okay. So in that case, I have two more days of trying to heal these dudes, then. Okay. Uh, Big B, you're at no more crit? Does he roll more than you did? No more crit. Uh, four negative wounds. Uh, mm. You recover ten there. And Ooh, on the last day, you would recover eleven. Uh, Medicaid, Jort, what's your crit set? Minus Medicaid, four still? Uh, minus four. Four, but I think okay. So I'm heavily wounded, right? Mm -hmm. So I regain one hit point for every 24 hours. Basically, yeah. Uh, add an additional okay. point per consecutive day of extended care that you've received beyond the first. So you're receiving four if I fail this test. That is the minimum that you can heal. You take the minimum that I can heal. <laughs> okay, I think I get in there. Yeah, being at such terrible crits. Uh, really makes it hard to get anything with, done with you, but you heal another five normal points. So you should be at full normal damage, but still have a grievous yeah. wound. Whereas Bigby has made a full recovery, and my light wound just vanished. Yeah. Yeah, one, one plus one, one plus two. Uh, I think that will still bring you to full regardless, which is good. Yeah, because I was at 14 out of 16 wounds, and then if I had rested for five days, that would be nine wounds, and then... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or 15 yeah, natural so beat on the bed I'm rest that I'm providing, yeah. yeah. So, George, I am going to belt you to this bed. You will not be allowed to move and injure yourself further for the week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask why I have so many belts. I went to the store. Snap, snap. I've been the wholesale. Uh, incidentally, Big B, take that. Take back two thousand of your credits. Uh, we couldn't go do that thing. Okay. We didn't get to spend our money. Uh, all right. So that's all of our healing. Uh, Alexander. You didn't get hurt, I think. No, you got, like, gently hurt. So, if you do nothing, you heal. Just managed to recover just by hanging out. Yeah, you strap into your generator, you healed in five seconds, and then forgot about it. <laughs> exactly. No one will ever know. So there was no worries there. There's people tripping over the power cord by acting as they walk behind you. And the only person to take care of healing outside of this is going to be the sergeant then, which, well, best of luck to him. Oh, yeah. Speaking of... <laughs> uh, after the end of the five days, there's two soldiers that come in, and uh, Commissar Hartley basically steps out and goes, Um... Scipio, if you could be so kind, it seems as though Staff Sergeant Jones is making his recovery. So, I'm going to transport you to him. Can get fitted for your Class A's. Be prepared for the ceremony. 
tomorrow. Ah, I understand, to you. sir. Sleep. Very well. Follow me. All right. Got the med kit, got my dress formals, everything's good. I have a med kit. Yep, yeah, and uh, as you, you are going, he puts you in the car, you guys drive out. You get to the Inquisitorial headquarters. Uh, talking, and he goes, Find us to wait for me in here. Uh, they're going to ask you a few questions, and then I will come retrieve you. And he sort of opens the door, and you can see this is uh, very similar to the interrogation room that Jort was in that you didn't have a chance to see. Right. There is a small little table with two chairs, a little recording device in the top left corner of the room. Oh boy. Well, after a few minutes, Inquisitor comes in, and uh, he knows that the Commissar is still standing right outside the door, waiting. And you must be Scipio, is that correct? Uh, yes, that would be me. Fantastic. Sanction Psyker. Telepathy Domination. Wow, there's not a lot of you, you folks running around. I'm the only one I've seen on this power. entire planet so far. We were hoping to get your uh, expert advice on something before we return you to your sergeant. Uh, namely, there was a rather spectacular incident of psychic phenomena that occurred during the night of the raid to retrieve one private jort. I see. Continue. Were you present at this facility? Let's see. Remembering the Commissar's words, I will remit the Commissar, especially given that he's watching me right now. <laughs> I'll go... So, you were there? Yeah, I, I will go ahead and say, like, uh, yes, I was part of the attempt to retrieve Jort. Fantastic. And during this attempt, did you utilize any psychic powers? Yes, I did. From what it would not we... allow us to enter. I told them to let us in. And once inside, did you utilize any of your powers? Uh, and before you answer... Uh, continue? Yeah, before I answer. Well, before you answer, Forensics has managed to piece together some rather curious results. Namely, it seems as though a number of the casualties were caused by their friends opening fire on them. Yes. Now, now it happens, but I'm going to venture a guess that you uh, tip their hand towards that conclusion. Yes, that would be my specialty. When utilizing such powers, that is what I do with it. It works very well against that... works. I can imagine just as well against human beings. Now, unfortunately, appreciate your candor. Hopefully we can maintain this level of honesty moving forward. Uh, Private Jort, much to our dismay, is that he doesn't recall seeing you at location. He is a reason for that. Do you also have... Yeah, we uh, came to that conclusion upon a uh, reflection of the notes. I'd like to tell you a small story of what I do know of George from the time period I've been here. When there was a bombardment of our encampment by Orc Rockets, he chose to stay outside by about a foot away from fully protective cover. That is the level of George's intellect. And uh, do you recall during this bombardment, was he injured in any way? I believe he was. It's been several weeks. 
Fair enough. It seems more and more that, well, wherever Jort goes, something spectacular occurs, and quite frankly, a normal guardsman shouldn't be surviving all of this. Now, you well, this team that got put together before he was assigned to it, he was assigned with a more traditional unit during which both his sergeant, the following sergeant, were cut down in battle. Jort miraculously survived. The member of this team to consistently survive is the engine seer, which, after taking a look at him, is understandable considering he is basically a walking suit of bulletproof armor. I can confirm that. I guess my question is how is it that Jort, a regular guardsman, barely enough intellect to light a match, has been so lucky the entire time. Have you noticed anything peculiar about Jort other than his intellect and fondness for mountain cuisine? I think at this point, Scipio has a look of genuine curiosity, concern, and is genuinely trying to recollect, like, what? H how does he do this? <laughs> There is genuinely a look on his face. We were looking over his uh, a lot of the commendations for the awards he is to receive. It seems as though, while both the sharpshooter and yourself are horrifically injured and incapacitated uh, during that orc surprise attack with the rocket. Am I reading this right? Rocket based mechanical ambulatory vehicle? I don't know what that Com means. Complete with a flamer. As I became very intimately familiar with holding it off. Apparently, Jort, equipped with nothing more than his uh, heavy bolter, manages to destroy a number of these things. And then initiate a rather spectacular explosion when the heavy mortars went off. Her substantial wounds, but not so substantial that he died. Hmm. I thought he was in the hospital beds, too. Well, it's true he's no, not he dead, was, I know he that. He was definitely injured. Um, that seems to be my concern. Seen guardsmen die from sharp sticks with heavy rocks, orcs with machine guns. Seen guardsmen die from trench foot malnutrition, space syphilis, everything. Seems to be beating the spread on this margin. So, being the resident expert, would you classify this as normal? Hmm. From what I understand of these powers and abilities possessed by me and others, I am more than confident that should would Jord possess these at all, he would he would perhaps explode within a day. Honestly. For him to possess these powers, to beat these statistical anomalies, and then also to hide it, and then also to hide the very personality required to harness them in the first place? I could not believe that. Yeah, that's what we were leading towards as well. If that's the case, then it seems as though the only likely cause of that phenomenon spontaneously occurring during his rescue would be you. Now, would you be so kind as to hand over your foci? I, I will Good go ahead and test on it. Yeah, I will go ahead and retrieve it from the bag and just place it in front of him. Fantastic. He takes it, he puts it in a little tray, seals it. Door opens up, and you can see that uh, now Commissar Hartley and Staff Sergeant Jones are on the other side of the door. 
uh, one of the like little assistants, a scribe, walks in and takes it, steps out. Uh, how's the staff sergeant look? Doesn't look great. Mm. Clearly been treated medically, but he still, you know, he took quite a bit of damage. Okay, okay. But yeah, so, as is going on, he goes, so, you went in there, you helped to uh, extricate Jort from his situation, and then you and, I'm sorry, how many people went on this mission to rescue Jort? Scipio kind of thinks for a moment and goes, I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Left before things got interesting. I had to haul the sergeant you... around. My focus was more on that, honestly. Oh, uh, still there? No question, Scipio. Did you encounter? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Go ahead. Law enforcement de detail. Uh, say that again? I, I don't think I actually caught that on audio. I think the question isn't fully coming in. Law enforcement detail. Great. Did I encounter the law enforcement detail? Uh, Scipio will go, uh, no, I did not. Well, that is, uh, surprising news, honestly. Happen to have a few members of the Arbitace that have put forward their testimony as to what had transpired. Give a detail of an individual that looks remarkably like you. Uh, Before we move on, go ahead. Yeah, move on. Are you absolutely sure that you did not encounter any members of the Arbitace? I'm positive. It was my sergeant or sergeant's order to leave. He told the uh he told all those there to leave. All right. So, here is the issue that we have. And the issue that we have is that turns out reason that the Arbitus and the Inquisition was able to reach this facility so quickly under investigation for quite some time. Now, Inquisitor Lamott has been so gracious as to forward his findings from his little farmstead raid. And we have been, thanks to the uh, transmissions collected from a private ray gun, Argent ray gun, Ceased. Uh, a number of additional cells were identified throughout the planet, one of which happens to be located here at this underground arena. And we've had them under watch for a few weeks now, and uh, that includes a rather, let's say, uh, expansive surveillance suite across the street. Now, this would not be the first time that a cult of chaos has managed to steal the faces of members of the Imperial Guard for nefarious purposes. Scipio will look Highly unlikely. Surprised. So what we're going to need to do is enter you through a number of tests to see whether or not uh, you are sufficiently corrupted as to require disposal. 
Oh boy, threshold No, I'm pretty test. sure you can tell why it is that... You can understand why we took your uh, foci. Of course. Are I you understand. now, or are you, or have you ever been a member of an organization that does not follow the Imperial Creed, the Imperial Cult's ideology, or has endeavored to worship any entity other than the God Emperor of Mankind? Of course not. I have always studied the Psychic Academy under the Emperor and was assigned to this duty. My history is well known. And do you now, or have you ever, provided any resources, intelligence, or beneficial materiel to an organization that is not officially recognized by the Astra Militarum? Never. And of course, Scipio says this with complete confidence because it's completely true. <laughs> All right, in that case, we are going to need to take a few uh, samples of your blood, test it for corruption, and we will get back to you with the results in about an hour's time. Um, we're going to put uh, your sergeant back in here. He is going to be responsible for your well-being for the foreseeable future. Thank you for your cooperation, and uh, if you could just fill out this quick survey based on, uh, well, on our customer service here. The Inquisition would be much Service. obliged. I'll just like take a look at it and go, how were you treated today? Were they polite and cordial? Wait, is it good or bad if I say you were? <laughs> There's only five as an option. <laughs> only uh, five. Oh, that makes it so easy. Option other than like completely satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just fives down the board. Perfect. <laughs> I test on the oh. emperor that the fleas here are of perfect quality and excellent upstanding citizens. <clears throat> Fantastic. Uh, as as they're sort of going through all of this, uh, I'm going to need you to do me a couple of things. As you're, as you're going through this form, you realize like you'll start clicking buttons and there'll be like a flash real quick, almost like a, an image. Or a sound, or a series of lights off in the corner, off in your periphery. And at first, you think it might just be your vision. Then maybe this thing is glitching. But I need you to roll me three willpower saves. Oh boy, my willpower's only gotten worse. Uh, all right. Oh gosh, I've lost ten points of willpower. It's so sad. Uh, I can reroll pinning. I can resist intimidation. I can reroll versus fear. Uh, and I think, yep, that's all the possibilities. I don't think it's any of those, so I'm just rolling straight. So, Uno. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, Dose. Tress. Oh, gosh. Seriously oh, failed the right. last one. God. You seriously failed the last Spectrum. one, but you seriously succeeded on the first one. And so, you, you watch as these first few things start flashing towards you and you're able to control as you realize that this is actually hard coded into this survey that you're filling out a sort of subliminal uh, messaging that your brain is processing but it's skipping right past your higher functioning capacity and going straight down to that instinctual sort of understanding that you utilize when you contact uh, the warp and you draw power from it and you realize that this is effectively a some subconscious test of your control. As the first few systems attempt to get you to draw power on the warp without you realizing it, much the same way that a possession or a lot of the other psyker perils might generate themselves. And the first one, just out of hand, you completely shut it down out of reflex. Before you even know what it is, you finished it. Mm -hmm. And the second one, you start to realize, like, oh, hold on a second. I'm, I'm drawing power from the warp. This isn't good at all. Mm -hmm. And you're able to finally, finally force it down. And then the last one, it finally breaks. 
roll real quick on not perils of the warp, mm-hmm. uh, but psychic, uh, phenomena. psychic phenomenon. There we go. All right, just a plain one d one hundred. Mm-hmm. As All you're right. doing this, you hear you hear a <laughs> as but how would you roll? A hundred. <laughs> Jesus we Christ. escalated already. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, Perils of the Warp. Roll me another All right, all one. You can ask for is give me another hundred. All right, sixty-one. Uh oh. 61. Oh, this is a fun one. Everyone's dead. <laughs> All right, as as summoning this is happening, the Imperium buckles and tears at the arrogance summoning. of the Psyker. Go ahead, describe first. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so, as this is happening, uh, you can actually start to feel the very air start to vibrate. You can feel the walls shake as you sort of glance over and you toss your head back as a spasm so hard that the muscles almost snap the vertebrae in your neck. And as your eyes are running around searching, you can see as like the shadows grow a little bit longer, a little bit deeper. And the cracks in the in the uh, stone walls around you almost start to seep blood. And as you're twitching and turning, your eyes flip over, and you can actually hear the sound of cackling demons, laughing as like the walls and the lights begin to swirl and spasm with a multitude of colors. And you can start to see the hands of this massive beast rip its way into reality. And as this happens, you hear Sergeant Jones go. I gave you my word. As he squeezes the trigger on the bolt pistol and blows the back of your skull out. And immediately, there we go. everything goes black. Yo, and that is where we're going to call it. I hope they have fun with the blood letter. <laughs> so, effectively, before this thing can completely manifest, your brains are blown out through the back of your skull with a bolt pistol. As the sergeant does what he is hired to do, or at least been charged with doing. Yup. Scipio <laughs> is down. And that is where we're going to call it. Um, yeah, my condolences, uh, Griff. I actually really liked Scipio. <laughs> it's okay. He tried his best here. <laughs> the smart move would have been just putting down the customer survey, but they probably would have also shot for that. Yeah, so I rolled a ninety nine on that, by the way. Yeah, you was, all as, you had to do, all you had to do, right, was either not fail the willpower test, or just not go perils of the warp. Just mm-hmm. for once, like how <laughs> how many how many of these rolls did you have to do, and were all of them perils of the warp today? Uh gosh, yes. Some of them were completely intentional too. Like well, there's no avoiding them. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh... uh... All right, well, well done, everyone. Thanks for coming. Yep. You know, yeah, there's just one more funny thing. I don't know how surviving. <laughs> just, just out of curiosity. Yeah. He could have dodged the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna end the story there, but he could have. <laughs> just so you know, would you like to say that, like, he sees the shot coming? And he just decides to take it anyway. Right. He, he will give that like one last like fearful glance to the sergeant, and that's it. Better than killing everyone. Oh, that's much sadder. Yeah. There we go. Full of your heartstrings. <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll work on a character if there's yeah. even time left in the campaign for it. The good news is, um, you're well well versed at this process. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's that. And uh, the, so uh, the, the, the next day, as everyone's getting ready to attend this award ceremony, you see a brand new soldier, but uh, he's wearing uh, Scipio's name tag. <laughs> <laughs> they got to fill in. All right. So hopefully you all had fun. Uh, I certainly I did. did. Uh, no, I Griff, we now know the uh, 
I think the dangers of the Psyker in 40K have been very well documented by you. Oh, yeah. In these last few sessions. I guess quick opinion on the Psyker in 40K versus, say, the Wizard in uh, just Warhammer Fantasy. You get to in uh, way more easily encounter the stuff that happens, and it can escalate a lot faster. But you can just cast freely. You don't have to like worry about failing half the time. So it's pretty oh, really? great. It, I think it is a lot more fun because you get to do the wizard stuff and then the bad wizard stuff happens that everyone is afraid of. It's great. <laughs> Whereas if That's you awesome. do Warhammer Fantasy, you have a high chance of failing. If you're only at one magic, you, you nothing bad could ever really go wrong. So why is anyone afraid of it anyway? Very true. And then when something does happen, it's always the weaker chart. <laughs> Yeah, not so much. Uh, not so much in forty k. Not so much here. As also, you summon a blood. Block. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That was uh, as soon as I was looking at that, I was like, ah, okay, that's that's fantastic. Dark summoning of all the ones it could be. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Ren. Yeah. <laughs> the best one to end off on. Short of everyone gets possessed and starts fighting each other. I mean that would have been uh, that would have been actually a lot of fun, but so or many close calls. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good game, everyone. Uh, when next we come back, it will be to, well, get the award ceremony, and then we will be maybe, for the sake of Jort, we will probably finish this in the next couple sessions. So not the next one, probably not the one after that, but possibly the one after the one after that. So Sounds there. good. Uh, and I guess the last Ooh. second question is, any XP for the rescue mission? For the rescue mission? Uh, see, what XP are you guys at, actually? As a Psyker specialist, I'm at 2,000. Which would put 2,000... Yeah, so 300 XP for everyone. You're about to hit your specialty. There you go. Alright. It's a new character. Except for, well, surprisingly, specialists will not hit their specialty, but Jort, as a non-specialist, will. So there's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't even know how much XP. I haven't been keeping track just of how much you give us. Uh, so effectively, XP. so effectively, you should be at two thousand. Wait, hold on. Two thousand six hundred. Because there there's we a go. Hundred difference between specialist and non-specialist. There you go. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, Alexander still, still surviving. Every time I try to give him the opportunity to do something dumb, he's managed to find a way to do it intelligently. So props to him. Yeah, and George, Jada, what's wrong? You should have killed your character by <laughs> Gosh, and George surviving too. Yeah, I don't that's know uh... how. Like... <laughs> I, I was so tempted to just like try to throw George under the bus, but I'm like, no, I can't do that to George. <laughs> I gave you the option. I gave you the option. It you gave rare. me I the option. I could have done it, but I didn't want to. I didn't have the heart. <laughs> and yeah, all that I've actually like, tried to die, and I just come out on top. <laughs> they try to shoot you. It just goes through your head. It's like, wait, what? There was nothing there of value. George was actually a secret sleeper agent, Gene Stealer Primark or something. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> I was a also, Calvinist assassin the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, low-key, though, I really wish I'd come up with the idea of just rolling random psychic phenomenon around Jort this entire time. Oh, yeah. I wish I would have come up with that, but... <laughs> All right, then. That would have been cool. All right, so... Well, I was... I'm going to catch the end of the hockey game. <laughs> Here it goes.